Colossus is the most advanced lineup optimizer in daily fantasy sports. Lock and exclude players. Adjust player exposure to reduce risk of injury or poor performance. Customize individual projections or upload your own projections. Generate hundreds of optimal lineups in seconds. Name and save the best lineups. Create winning lineups for the top sites like DraftKings and FanDuel for free at DailyFantasyCafe.com. Hello and welcome to the DraftKings Daily Trot. I'm Big Italy 42. He is Scott Mail. We got Sports 25 to Life fans. Got another one of those interesting slates here where we've got Clayton Kershaw, we've got Coors Field games. So, as you know by now, especially with a $14,600 price tag, you can't, excuse me, you can't have both. So, you're going to have to either find some value pitchers or maybe, you know, have minimal exposure to Coors Field game. But both sides of that Coors Field game has uh, very exploitable pitchers. So, not a situation like we saw a few days ago where we had a couple of decent pitchers at least. So, definitely a game you're going to want some exposure to. So, well, what's your take here tonight? Are you uh, paying up at pitcher for the security, or are you going to try to find mid-range guys and get cores? Um, I'm probably going to pay up at least a little bit. I, I mean, it's hard not to love Kershaw tonight. Harvey's a great play. I mean, it's really hard to argue with either of those guys. I mean, even Scherzer could have a great game here in a six-and-a-half over-under uh, against St. Louis. Obviously, he's got a, a tougher opponent in St. Louis and Waka, but... Um, I like all of these guys. Even Cole Hamels is a solid play today. I mean, I'm going to be spending up as much as I possibly can. I'd love to get cores, but, um, I mean, there's enough other good hitters out there today that I would rather spend up at pitching and play it fairly safe. Yeah, yeah, I don't blame you there. There's, like you said, all those guys in good spots there, the expensive guys. Um, of course, Kershaw, especially with uh, Brandon Crawford, one of their best hitters against lefties day-to-day now. Maybe he misses tonight. That's a big bat they wouldn't be seeing, so... Um, other options, though, if you're looking for middle-tier guys, I like Jordano Ventura at $7,700. He's a guy who was awful at the beginning of the year, got sent down to the minors. Seems like he's finally got it figured out. Over his last four starts, has given up either 0, 1, or 2 earned runs in each of those games. Yep. One of them against this same Detroit team at KC. So, I mean, at his price tag of 7700 he's a minus 200 favorite. It is an 8-run total, which you don't love. But it's a pitcher's park at Kauffman. Obviously, Detroit, one of those teams that... If they're not hitting the ball out of the ballpark, then um, they're not scoring a whole lot of runs. And he's been a, doing a good job of limiting that recently. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think he's a really solid option. Really one of the only guys I like very much in that price range. I mean, there's not a, not a ton to like there. Um, if I'm looking for someone else, I'll probably look at Kevin Gaussman against Tampa Bay a little bit lower. Um, he's 6,200. Minus 140 favorite, it looks like. He's a guy I'll, I'll be uh, looking at a decent amount. Uh, prior to his last game where he struggled a little bit uh, in Texas, which is kind of be expected, he's been really good. And, I mean, even that last game, he gave up four earned runs and six and two-thirds. Um, not a ton of strikeouts, but, I mean, prior to that, he was going six, seven innings, uh, three or less earned runs in each of his previous three starts and five of the last seven – or five of the last six, sorry, um, with six, eight, eight, six strikeouts. I mean – He's a really solid option today. I think I prefer him in cash games just because there's not a ton of upside with him. I mean, you're not going to get eight-plus innings or nine-plus strikeouts out of him, but I think he can give you a really solid six, seven innings, a couple earned runs, and six, seven strikeouts in this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I think that's a good cheap play. And then a couple other guys to consider as tournament options in your cheap range. Uh, Aaron Nola's been pitching very well, $7,300. It's been against lesser competition, though, against Miami and San Diego in the last two games, so... Obviously, not an ideal situation against the Mets team that's scoring a lot of runs right now, but I think with him being uh, facing Harvey and facing a hot Mets offense, I think that's going to make him a really low-owned um, GPP play, and uh, I like his prospects of uh, a 5% or less owned guy having a decent performance tonight. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of under-owned guys, especially in this like second-tier pitchers. I mean, Sonny Gray against the Angels is not a bad option at all. He's a minus-140 favorite. Um, the Angels have really been struggling. They have a sub-100 ISO against righties over the last month. Um, I mean, he's 11,600 on DraftKings, which makes him awfully hard to draft. But he's got a ton of upside in this one and should be rock solid, um, even if he's not going for eight innings and ten strikeouts or something like that. So um, it's really hard to argue with any of these guys. Scott Casimir at 9,300 against a Seattle team that doesn't hit lefties well is a solid option, too. Um, I don't hate Tanaka against Boston. He's been really good lately. 
Um, but he's a little bit overpriced in a pretty high over under game. Boston's been pretty hot, but I mean, there's a lot of a lot of pitching options at the top at least today. Yeah, definitely. I'll throw out one more guy I like in the mid range. Uh, Taiwan Walker, seventy eight hundred dollars. A very inconsistent pitcher, but a guy that does have um, significant upside. I mean, he pitched that complete game, um, eleven strikeout game against Minnesota a couple weeks back. Had a great performance against White Sox last time out. So not a guy that comes without risk, but Houston strikes out. Um, second most against right-handed pitching of any team in the league. So if it gives you a quality start, you got to expect the strikeouts will be there. Yeah, right, for sure. All right, catcher options for tonight. Of course, you're looking at guys in Coors Field where you can, um, as far as big-time upside. Uh, Wellington Castillo at $3,900 really catches my eye as a, uh, a fairly cheap option, or a cheaper option, I guess, compared to some of these big bats. So I like him. But once again, as he always generally is against righty. John Jaso is probably going to be your chalk cash game play at $2,700 against Gaussman. Um, I mean, not a guy with a ton of upside, but he gives you that nice floor for cheap. And he's been batting cleanup recently, so his RBI chances have been even higher as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you're not playing Gaussman, I think he's, I mean, as close to the, I mean, he's definitely the top value play for sure, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I mean, Wellington Castillo and Coors obviously is a great play. Um, Jonathan Lucroy against Locke. A lefty today is all right, but I mean he hasn't been that good against lefties that I that I want to pay four thousand for him to be yeah. honest. I mean I'm going to end up going back to Jaso a ton if I don't have Gaussman because I mean there's not a lot else that I like much at uh, catcher. I mean Derek Norris if he's not um, out with that arm injury that he sustained a couple days ago at twenty nine hundred against Hamels is okay. I mean Hamels is a much better pitcher than. Um, uh, great for Colorado. So, I mean, it's it's really hard to pass up Wellington Castillo or John Jaso today. Yep, those are my top guys as well. And then uh, moving to first base, Paul Goldschmidt, $6,300. One of the top hitters overall on the slate, if not number one, but very tough to fit in your lineup. So he's going to be a GBP only option there. Um, I love Jose Abreu at 4800 against Tommy Malone, Tom Malone, whatever you want to call him now. But, I mean, he's just not been very good. Abreu, Obviously, been very good against lefties this year. So, I think he's my favorite among uh, those expensive guys that's it, actually affordable. But then a little bit cheaper, hard to look past a guy like Ben Paulson. I mean, not a tremendous baseball player, but I mean, he's just good and he's cheap and he's at course field against a bad pitcher. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that's about where I'm at, too. I mean, I love Jose Abreu today against Malone. I mean, it's, it's really hard not to for 4,800 at Minnesota against a lefty for him. Um, I mean, there's a couple other solid options, but I think he kind of stands out to me. Uh, Goldschmidt's obviously really expensive. Ben Paulson feels a little bit overpriced, even though that's a pretty good matchup for him with uh, a uh, Anderson um, in Colorado. That's a, that's one I'll definitely look at because, I mean, 3700 isn't an outrageous price by any means. Um, and then another guy that interests me a decent amount is uh, Adrian Gonzalez against Mike Leake today. Um, he's only 3600 That's probably where I'd go for a cash game play. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And then a couple other guys. I like Kendris Morales against Randy Wolf. I know Wolf's been pretty good in his two starts, but I'm not a believer at this stage in his career that he's going to continue to do that. And then um, one other guy finally hit for some power last night. Um, Ian Kennedy has been very consistently good recently, but still struggles against lefties. Prince Fielder at $3,600 seems like uh, too cheap to play as well. Yeah, that's a good call too. All right, second base options. Uh, going to be hard to look past Brian Dozier against a lefty. And uh, Carlos Rodon, um, obviously Rodon's been pitching pretty well, but Dozier had no trouble getting to Chris Sale last night. One of the better hitting middle infielders against lefties um, in all of baseball. Um, Jose Altuve it is a righty, but he's been putting up some great numbers recently, very consistent. So um, going to be tough to pay for either of these guys, but um, I'd love to get one of these guys in my cash games tonight if I can. Yeah, definitely. I also like Zobrist as usual. Um, you mentioned you're not a believer in Wolf. I'm not either. Um, he's had a ton of power this year against righties. Uh, 179 ISO on the year, 399 Woba. I mean, this is the side of the plate you want Zobris from if you're going to pay that price for him. Um, I don't mind Chase Utley, another left-handed Dodger that uh, is in a pretty good spot against Mike Leak. Um, if you're looking a little bit cheaper, um, uh, oh, Justin Turner's 3400. I mean, he's still way too cheap against righties or lefties. Um, at least 2700 that's probably the way I would go for a cheap option today. Um, probably going to hit uh, second or third, I would guess. Probably second since it's a righty today. Um, no one's super cheap, though. I mean, Gordon Beckham's minimum against a lefty, which, I mean, is his better side of the plate, but I'm not sure if he has a good side of the plate at this point. Um, <laughs> so, 
I mean, that's a, that's a struggle for me. I mean, he probably will hit sixth or seventh against a lefty today. That's usually what he does. He gets out of the nine hole against them. But, I mean, even for 2,000, I have a really tough time playing him. Yeah, I mean, it's still your roster spot that you're giving up. Yep. I mean, it's not necessarily a salary at that point. Um, Neil Walker from left side played against uh, the rookie in Kyle Davies, who was pretty terrible in the minor leagues. I expect that uh, Pittsburgh gets to them. Obviously, Neil Walker much better from the left side there. And then $3,100 Runetto door against mm-hmm. Ian Kennedy. He's a guy that just continues to hit well. Pretty spacious park at Petco, though. He's a guy with uh, some power and uh, a little bit of speed. So maybe one of those guys hit one in the gap there at Petco with that big ballpark and uh, turn him into a – probably get a bat seventh or eighth, which you don't like, but you, you like that for tournaments because it's going to be low level. Yep. All right, third base options. It's going to be nearly impossible for me to not play Nolan Arenado at $4,900 against Chase Anderson. Um, home running back-to-back games now, obviously in Coors Field. Um, Miguel Sano, I think, is a great play as well, but he's more of a, a swerve off of uh, Arenado because you got to imagine Arenado is going to be the chalk play at 4,900 tonight. Yeah, I remember when everybody said Sano couldn't hit lefties because of his nine at bat sample size for the longest time. He just <laughs> raked Chris Sale last night. What did he go three for five with a home run? Yeah, smash. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great play again. I agree with you. I think I prefer Arenado for 600 less. Sano's definitely a little bit overpriced, even though, I mean, that's a great matchup once again. Um, I like Manny Machado a little bit as a GPP play against uh, Ramirez for Tampa Bay. He's 4,700. Um, I'm going to probably avoid Jake Lamb again if, as much as I possibly can, even though his price came down a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm just not excited about playing him. A yep. um, couple other guys. Trevor Plouffe is a decent swerve from Sano, another third baseman for the Twins. It hits lefties really well. Rodon's been getting crushed by righties um, that hit lefties really well lately. Uh, so I like a lot of these Minnesota bats tonight, even though Rodone's been um, honestly really pretty good over his last five starts or so. Um, if you're looking for cheaper guys, there's not a ton at third base. Third base is probably a position I'm paying up for today. Um, I mean, Pedro Alvarez at Milwaukee against Davies is a pretty good uh, GPP option for 3300 um, I don't mind Lonnie Chisholm Hall again at 3100 against uh, Dickey in Toronto. That's a great park factor for him. Um, but no one, like, staggeringly cheap that I would really want to get off of these top guys for. Yeah, I completely agree with you there. I'll throw out a couple more tournament guys, both Pittsburgh guys, Jung Ho Gong and Aramis Ramirez. Um, I'm going to be loading up on Kyle Davies um, quite a bit tonight because he just simply seems like a terrible pitcher. And these are guys with, obviously, Aramis Ramirez, tail end of his career, hits lefties better than righties, but he definitely still has some upside and finally starting to get it going there in that offense. Uh, Shortstop options. Of course, Carlos Correa at the top, as he always is. $4,800 uh, against Taiwan Walker, who, as you mentioned, good and bad. Um, very inconsistent pitcher. Troy Tulewiski just sitting there tempting you at $4,000 while he continues to disappoint just about yeah. every night. Um, but also gets Trevor Bauer, who, another one of those mixed bag type of guys. You never know what you're going to get. He has great stuff when he can locate, but other times he just gets crushed. So um, I don't have much faith in Bauer, but I also don't have a whole lot of faith in Tulowitzki here tonight, so it's going to be tempting to play him in your cash games at 4K, though. Yeah, it definitely will be. I mean, I'm going to have a hard time passing him up, that's for sure, especially with Correa up at 4,800. Um, I mean, I like Correa basically every night if you can afford him. It's pretty hard to argue with him. Um, if you're looking for a little bit cheaper guy, Jed Lowry is another guy for Houston that's been hitting really well lately. He's been hitting second and third in the order quite a bit. Um, only 3,200 there against a righty and Walker. Um, and then Jimmy Rollins, I'll, I'll keep mentioning he's just too cheap at the top of the Dodgers order, 3000 um, and facing a righty and leak that just really isn't very good. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with you there. So um, that's going to be about it. Uh, I'm going to try to get myself a big bat at shortstop yep. if I can, but uh, it's not going to be that tough because I feel like there are some, uh, some decent values that can make some other guys fit. Um, outfield, though, it's going to be tough to fit some cores bats. you got A.J. Pollock at 5900 Charlie Blackman at 53, and Carlos Gonzalez at 5,000. I'm a little confused why those guys are flipped, but um, I'm not going to complain. Carlos Gonzalez, obviously, with the higher upside. Uh, David Peralta is still a pretty fair value at $4,700. Um, a guy that smashes right-handed pitching. Um, Ender Enciarte is more expensive than him, which I don't understand because he's not nearly the hitter that uh, Peralta is. He's got a nice floor. It almost seems like Enciarte is like the, uh, the Charlie Blackman with uh, less stolen base appeal. Um, for Arizona in this game where you know, he's got the speed but not a lot of power. So for me, yeah, it's definitely going to be Peralta if I'm picking one of those two guys. Yeah, definitely. Um, some top options outside of course. Lorenzo Cain against Wolf is another guy that I like quite a bit. 
Um, 5,000 has been crushing lefties all year. 413 Woba, 219 ISO. Um, Ryan Braun against a lefty in lock. Braun's just absolutely mashed lefties while the rest of the Brewers have been uh, just really struggling. Yep. But, I mean, he brings in a 431 Woba and a 284 ISO against lefties. They're in Milwaukee tonight. I mean, that's a great GPP play. And, I mean, it's pretty hard to argue with in cash games if you can afford it, too. Uh, I mentioned Zobrist already. I have him as a top outfield play also, even if you're not playing him at second base because of Dozier. I'm going to have probably those two guys in a decent amount of lineups together. Um, Another Pittsburgh guy like Gregory Polanco, probably going to lead off at 3,700 against Davies in Milwaukee. Um, His numbers on the season against righties aren't great, but, I mean, he's been absolutely fantastic since the All-Star break. Yep, a couple of guys I'll mention around there. Uh, Gerardo Parra, 4,100 against Rasmo Ramirez. Um, Franklin Gutierrez has been killing left-handed pitching. Obviously, it's a tough matchup with uh, Scott Casme here, but, I mean, it seems like this guy just every night just hitting a home run against uh, yep. left-handed pitching. So, you, while you hate the matchup, certainly a guy you can sit, consider. Um, Matt Kemp and Justin Upton are interesting, and I like Cole Hamels, but uh, both those guys have been hitting lefties pretty well, especially Kemp. Saw that he's been leading the uh, – National League and RBI since the All-Star break. And, yep. I mean, he's been absolutely on fire. So, certainly not trying to pick on Hamels, but I think that little duo right there, nice cheap uh, mini stack that you can throw in some tournaments there. Um, and then elsewhere, when you're looking for cheap guys, as it always seems is the case, you get some cheap Dodgers. Andre Ethier, $2,800, probably the best one if you ask me. Yeah, um, Johnny Gomes will probably be in the lineup against Wolf today also for Kansas City, probably 5-6. I'm not really sure on that yet. Um but, I mean, he's a really strong option at 2,300 in a much better lineup now. Great BVP, uh, too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I just saw 23. that. Yeah. Um, Carl Crawford at 2,400. You mentioned cheap Dodgers. He's going to face Leak today also. That's a really cheap uh, outfield option with some upside. Daniel Nava has been leading off for uh, Tampa Bay against uh, righties. He'll probably lead off again tonight. He's flat 2,000. Um, Grady Sizemore is probably going to hit right behind him. He's 2,200. And then... Um, I mean, that's probably most of the cheap guys. That's more than enough uh, than we'll probably need in the outfield tonight. Yeah, I'll throw out Kyle Parker also just because uh, he's there. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be one of those nights where there's there's plenty of – that's the best thing about DraftKings is you've got those absolute minimum 2K guys. Fit a couple of those guys in and get all the big bats you want. You don't really need to get a whole lot out of those guys either. So, Yep. All right, that's going to wrap things up. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out all of our great content at DailyFantasyCafe.com.